Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of September. And you guys, the launches in September for eyeshadow palettes, perfection, amazing. Making this video one of the most difficult rankings I've had to do. So if you want to see me struggle, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of their makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, particularly eyeshadow palettes. So the month of September, I tried, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 eyeshadow palettes. I'm, I have 10 places today. And it was very, very heavy on the holiday palette releases for the brands that I really love. All of my major brands are in this video, making it very challenging. So we're going to start off at the worst. This one was the clear number 10 for me last place. And I don't even, what is this called? The Fenty Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match Eyeshadow Palette is what is coming in last place for me. So it's cute. I was excited about this when I saw it. I, it was the first eyeshadow palette from Fenty that I had to get my hands on. The quality really is not very good. Uh, the mattes themselves are really, really nice. I've enjoyed the matte eyeshadows here, but the shimmers are lacking. Don't get me wrong, you can absolutely get a pretty look with this, but in terms of quality and just the amount of formulations that I've tried, this is just not up to par with a lot of other eyeshadows that I've tried, especially for the price. There's no reason for the quality to be like this for the price. You know, this is... You can get nicer eyeshadow palettes for definitely a lesser price. And based on the quality that Fenty tends to have in general, which is really, really nice products, this is not up to par with what I expect from their regular line of products. Now, I'm not very familiar with the eyeshadow formula. I did try the big palettes in the very, very beginning of the brand, and I really liked those. I thought the eyeshadow formula was just like on par with the price point and what it should be, nothing special. This is a formula that I feel like is not justified in the price at all. Don't recommend this. I mean, you see on the other side I have the little highlights. I'm not a big fan of this formula either. So all in all, not a fan of this launch from Fenty, unfortunately. I took this on a little staycation that I went on. Again, the makeup was really pretty, but I just wasn't impressed with the formulas. Okay, from this point on, I'm going to be honest, all the palettes really bomb. I like them all, and I recommend them all. But they had to fall where they fell because of the amazingness that was this month of launches. So I have the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Eyeshadow Palette. I really like these. I buy them every year. They're good enough to keep me coming back every year. This is what the color story looks like. We have a lot of really warm neutrals and I feel like I'm going to get a lot more use out of this once it gets cooler out and you know we have Thanksgiving. I'm really going to want to reach for this one more. Uh, but I like these. These are always very very solid palettes. You know there's a few shades that I feel like could use a little bit more creaminess in the formulation but for the most part really love the tones in here. It's just like it's just repetitive. These do imitate themselves every single year. I definitely probably have these shades from the previous palettes that come out like this every year, but I like it. I like the quality. You get some really pretty, reliable looks. Just looks that you can fall back on, you know? I might be wearing this eyeshadow right now, but in real life, you guys, not on camera, if I'm not thinking about using specific colors or using specific techniques, if I'm throwing something on my eyes to head out of the door, it's gonna be a palette like this with these colors. So I like this one. I definitely recommend it, though I would say I would wait for this to go on sale. Most of the time, I find that as the holiday season progresses, palettes like these will go on sale. So wait for for a sale. It does smell like like some nice cinnamon. Not my favorite smelling palette from Too Faced, but it's a solid palette. Really pretty. Makes a great gift. Good everyday palette. Don't have too much bad to say about it, but also don't have anything spectacular to say about it. Moving on to number eight. This is actually the palette that I am wearing on my eyes right now. I mean, 
This is a pretty look if I do say so myself. So this is from Sigma Beauty and this is their collaboration with Beauty Bird. This is the Dream Palette and you guys, I'm happy to report I do really like this palette. If you're new here, I love Sigma eyeshadow palettes for their color stories. I always want to buy them. I'm always very tempted by them just because I think their stories are so beautiful. The layout was, is always so well done. And then I'm always very disappointed by the formula. I hadn't up until this point found an eyeshadow palette that I liked from Sigma Beauty as far as the formulation. And this is the best quality that I've tried thus far. I still need to try the Cinderella palette, but I am so happy that this palette worked out for me. Now, it's not a perfect palette. So I've been using the neutral tones. I've been loving the neutral tones. Again, I've been grabbing for this for when I do wedding makeup. Not on others, but on myself. Just those easy, everyday neutral eyes. Uh, and today, I wanted to play more in the colorful side because I hadn't really done that yet. And I will say, the neutral quality, really, really nice. The colorful quality, you just need to use a little extra care. I think the first time that I tried the blue shade, I went in too hard. I had to remove it. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't look very well blended to me. So I had to be more careful, start off with a little and slowly blend up as opposed to starting off with a lot of product at once. So I would say this blue definitely needs a little extra care. And uh, same thing with the purples, just be a little bit careful, be a little bit lighter handed, work a little bit slower so that the product does what you want. But nonetheless, you can can absolutely make it work and though it does take extra care it doesn't take that much extra care or that much extra work to make it work but <laughs> do you get what I'm saying it's not perfect I did have to kind of readjust how I normally apply to take a step back and be a little bit more careful with the colorful shades but all in all really nice I didn't have the same problems that I normally have with Sigma eyeshadows so I'm happy with this. I really like it. I think it's a really great value. I also love the brush set that came out with this collection. I didn't show you this in an IG reel that I filmed for this look. And by the way, I did film a look. It will be on Instagram, so make sure you're following me at Morgan Turner Makeup to see how I did this look. I didn't show you guys, but I also used this as the highlight and it brightens everything really pretty. So I do recommend this. I think it is really nice and I think Sigma did a good job with this. Just be aware if you're playing on the colorful side to just work a little bit slower. Number seven is a palette that I find to have very similar tones to the Beauty Bird palette. It is from ColourPop and it's the It's a Mood palette. This is one of the best ColourPop palettes that have come out in my opinion recently. I've been very bored with their stuff. Um, I was lucky enough to get on their PR list months and months ago and I've just like, I've been receiving the PR but I haven't been that impressed. I've been looking at the launches. I mean, like, the packaging's cute, the theme is cute, but fatigue. Fatigue is what I'm feeling. So when this palette came out, I felt quite invigorated. I was like, this is beautiful. So if you take a look on the inside, it has these gorgeous, moody, jewel tones in there, lots of textures, really great quality. This is a phenomenal value. It reminds me a lot of the Sigma palette that I just showed you. It has a lot of the similar tones. I think the quality on this is a wee bit better. It's a little bit easier for me to work with. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I've been enjoying the neutrals as I've been doing a lot. I've been wearing a lot of like brown, green kind of looks. So I've done a lot with that, with this palette. I've also played with the colorful tones here as well. I've enjoyed them a lot. You know, knowing the ColourPop formulation, I've adjusted to how ColourPop formulations work. Again, light hand, just be a little careful with the blending. But I think it's a really, really great quality palette. Really great price. And I think you just get so many colors and textures in here. It's definitely a hit, one of my favorite palettes that they've come out with in a long time, and you get endless amounts of color, you guys. So I think, honestly, if you're looking for a good fall palette that you can also kind of step outside of the box with um, and maybe add some fun pops, this one is a good one for the fall. You could definitely recreate the look that I'm wearing right now with this palette as well. You know, put this blue or this blue in the outer corner, play around with this in the inner corner, put a shimmery purple in the center, of the lid. Yeah, you can definitely get a similar look to what I'm wearing with this palette as well. I am recommending it over the Sigma palette, but they're both really fabulous. I'm very happy with both. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this one is ranking so low. Oh my gosh, especially now at this point, you're gonna see is where things got tough. 
I'm sweating a little bit. But number six, it's a palette that I really love, like straight up love, not a like, it's a love. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eyes Are Forever palette. And normally I feel like on a normal month, this would rank top two, top three. But dang, so many good palettes have come out. But I'm bored by the packaging of this. I wish she had done something a little bit more glam than keeping it all black, but I'm not ranking this by packaging, by the way. And I love the quality of this. I love the value of this. This is one of the palettes that I recommend the most every year. It's one of the holiday launches that I'm most excited for every year. I mean, it's a really great palette. You get the green tones that I've been loving. You get some smoky colors. You get light bright eyes up here. Lots of options in this palette. But I will admit, I definitely have all of these colors in my Charlotte Tilbury collection. It is repetitive at this point, but I do love the quality on this. It's always a reliable purchase. It's just kind of like, I didn't need it. I'm happy I got it. I don't regret it. But no, I really love it though. The end of the day, nothing but positivity here. It's just it's very repetitive. So yeah, that's why that's ranking at number six. Moving into number five, and you guys are gonna be shooketh that this ranked over the Charlotte Tilbury, but there is something, something special about this palette that I needed to rank it pretty high, and that is the ABH Primrose palette. I cannot wait for this to come to Ulta and Sephora for you guys because it really is a great pickup. I'm so happy with it. It has the most beautiful berry tones in here. You can get warm looks. The quality in here is just spectacular. The shimmers are so creamy and so textured. The mattes are really pigmented, so blendable. Now this isn't a must have for everybody. You know, it does have a lot of tones that you most likely have in your collection if you have collected quite a few eyeshadow palettes like myself. But all around, I think it's such a well-rounded palette. It's versatile for the everyday person. You can lean more pink. You can lean more purple or berry. You can lean more bronzy with this. It's just in that tone of colors that just make you feel good, look good, no matter what you pair together. The quality is nice. This is a hit from ABH in my opinion. I've been loving this palette. This is an ideal everyday palette for myself and once these become a little bit more readily available, I definitely recommend this. One of my favorite palettes this month that came out. Surprisingly, I wasn't expecting it to love it this much, but I really, really do. I just feel good about it. It just gives me that feeling inside. All right, moving on to number four. Again, I did not expect this one to rank so high, but I feel so beautiful when I wear this palette. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Palette of Pearls in Celestial Pearl. Now, the day that I'm filming this, actually, her sister launched today. There was actually two Luxury Palette Pearl, these style palettes for the holidays that came out. Um, and she launched this one first, and I've been waiting for the second one, and it did launch today. It looks a little bit deeper, it has more purples in it. But anyways, um, I wasn't super excited for this one initially. What I'm excited for, really, the most is the packaging. It's beautiful, it's luxurious, it's really a great step up from the original packaging, which the original packaging, super classic, nice, sophisticated, but I like this. I'm happy for this holiday packaging here, um, but I love the formulas in here. It's not a quad that gives you depth, which is why I wasn't too sure about this quad at first, but I'm all in on it now. It's not going to give you depth. This palette is about the glow. It's about awakening the eyes, and then you let the eyeliner and the mascara and the lashes do the talking as far as depth. It gives that very classic Charlotte Tilbury glowy eye that, you know, it, that's what she does with the brand. And I love this rose gold shade over here. There's like the duochrome shades. If you like a shimmery, but elegantly shimmery, bright eye, I really think you will love this. And you guys know I like to let you know what my mom thinks of things because she does have a medium skin tone. She's around the NC42 range. She took this to her bathroom, she tried it on, and she bought one for herself. She even loved the glowy look on herself. So don't be scared of this if you have a deeper skin tone. Embrace the glowiness. So I've been loving this. This is now one of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury quads. The glow that it gives the eye is so ethereal. There's something about the finish of these shadows. You get what you pay for. You pay a lot for this, and I would not tell you to pay $56 for a quad, but I am so happy I picked this one up. 
and I did pick up the sister as well. The review is probably up at this point, and if it's not, it's coming. Moving on to number three. I don't know. It came out in the very, very beginning of the month, so it's kind of lost its fire with me. It's just now kind of a staple in my Natasha Denona collection. It is the Retro Palette. Now, with all of these holiday releases, I'm like, huh, this palette's kind of boring, but truly, it has the essential colors that I love. If you like the type of eyeshadows that I love, mauve -y, pinky, purpley, you will like this. This really brings those mauve tones to a wearable place. I don't know, Natasha just did a phenomenal job of making these realistic colors, but still keeping it in that brighter purple-pink kind of color family. Quality on this is really great. This is one of my favorite styles of her palettes in terms of the size and price range. And it's really good, but now it's like boring to me. I'm telling you. I haven't used this in a couple weeks because I've been playing with all these pretty colorful sparkly palettes. So now I'm like, want to drop this lower. But I know once the glitters and shiny sparkly new things have been around for a while, this one would shoot up higher. So I really like this one. It's just been colors that I really like. I don't know. I loved this palette in the beginning of the month. <laughs> now I'm bored with it. But I, no, it's, it's a gorgeous palette. I definitely recommend it. It's ranking at number three. That should tell you something. All right, number two is the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey palette. At the current moment, I'm still waiting for the quads to come in. I can't, like, where are they? They're taking too long, but <laughs> I really like this palette. Uh, I said in my original review that I prefer last year's palette that came out in this style. However, there's something about this that is so approachable to me and that I feel like I will end up using it more than the one from last year because the colors in here are just so wearable. I love the style of packaging from Pat McGrath. I love that you can get so many colors of her great formulation in here and it's not affordable, but for her, it's a great value. I love the quality here. Hey, I've done a lot of looks with this at this point. I feel like there's so much variety here. And what I love most is how neutral of a look that you can still get. So I don't feel like there's too much missing from here. You can kind of create looks from all different angles. The only thing I did wish is that there were a few more colorful mattes in here because there's only four mattes in here and they're all kind of bleh colors, like two rose colors and two brown colors. And don't get me wrong, those shades are essential, but I feel like this look could truly be more versatile especially with the colorful tones of the shimmers here if there were some corresponding mattes with that but other than that I really love this it's really great quality you have some great sparkle shades lots of versatility with it I mean it has to ring so high because I'm biased it's Pat McGrath love her formula have had a lot of fun with this so far will definitely continue to create more looks with this all right friends <sighs> First place, uh, it's a collection of three palettes that I'm just counting as one because I can't choose. To me, they're all great. I feel like they also all kind of work together. Odin's Eye really showed up with their legendary Diversa collection where they collaborated with three beautiful creators who also did their thing with these palettes. I've talked about these so much that I almost don't want to talk about them anymore because I've already told you guys how amazing these are. But seriously, this is the best quality that Odin's Eye has come out with. Every single matte in here has been phenomenal, pigmented, blendable, not too much fallout. And the shimmer and duochrome shades in here have been so comparable to Pat McGrath. Seriously. As far as getting a formula that's close to Pat McGrath, that is an affordable price, I think Odin's Eye really is the way to do it. I'm not saying they're dupes, but in terms of the vibe, Odin's Eye really completes that. So we'll start off talking about Hummingbird with Tina or Fancy Face. This is the colorful one. I've created a few fun looks with this one. I was playing with it the other night. I think I created like four looks before I went to bed. So fun, lots of options, and very impressed with the colorful mattes in here that can be so difficult for brands to create. Red Dragon palette I've mentioned a few times. This was in collaboration with a Judy. Uh, fall Tones. I've had to like pry this out of my hands not to use it, but I want to use fall colors in this as far as the textures and the colors. You can create 
beautiful unique fall tone looks and then giant wolves this one is going to be in my winter palettes video i can already tell you that the cool tones in here it's grungy i created a really cool greenish look that i believe it was my september favorites that i wore this in i mean i'm still not done with these i don't feel like i've done these justice yet i need to create more looks with these you know there's so much more inspiration that i have from these palettes and that right there tells me why these should be in first place because i've created probably seven to eight looks with these palettes at this point and i still feel like i'm not done i still have these ideas in my head and these looks that i want to create so i cannot stress enough how good this collection is I recommend it. <laughs> all right, you guys, there we have it. Those were me ranking all of the palettes that I tried in the month of September from worst to best. But really, it was like from best to best because it was a good month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and for all of the support that you have given me. It does not go unnoticed. I appreciate it so, so much. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.